Today we're going to build this big bookshelf thing. Sort of. So I actually built this thing back in 2014, back in my furniture selling days. And today I'm building it again, sort of, because I'm going to start selling furniture again, sort of. In this video, I'm actually going to be building this, a scaled down prototype version of the piece that I'm going to be selling. More on that later though. For now, let's just jump into the build. Whenever I build this piece, I always like to start with the leg structure portion of the build. So that's what I'm gonna start with on this one too. Here I'm just milling all the wood and breaking it down into some chunks that I can start to get my pieces from. So let me preface this by saying that when it comes to scale, I'm 99% sure that there's some jargon out there that I'm unaware of. And I don't really feel like figuring it all out, but just so that you know what I'm doing, I'm basically cutting everything in half. So if something was six feet long, now it's three feet long. If it was an inch and a half thick, now it's three quarters of an inch thick, and so on. In my mind, that seems like it's half scale, but I could also see where you might make a case that it's maybe one eighth scale, because if you think of it in terms of overall volume, since there's three dimensions, you're using an eighth of the volume. Anyway, all that scale nonsense aside, once I had my leg pieces roughed out, I started in on the detail work. Here I started by marking the width of the foot of the leg at 3 quarters of an inch. Then I marked a 5 degree angle, which is going to give the front legs that lean that I'm looking for. And then finally I marked the total length of the leg and the width at the top. And then I connected the dots. La 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 la. Whenever possible, I like to cut tapers on a tapering jig at the table saw. And the length of these legs was just right on the limit of what my saw could handle. But since I wanted to keep with the theme of doing things how I would actually do it on a full-size model, I cut all of the tapers at the bandsaw. Pro tip, when you're trying to cut close to the line on your bandsaw, always make a concentration face that looks like somebody put a dollop of poo just above your upper lip. Really helps to keep things accurate. Moving on. After I had the pieces roughed out, and actually left them quite a bit proud of the line, I took one front leg and one back leg and cleaned them to their final size on my joiner. You could do this by sanding as well, but this was just quicker. Anyhow, then I took those two legs and used them as templates to create the other two legs over at the router. And this is probably a good time to jump back into what I mentioned at the top of the video, selling furniture. So not too long after I started making furniture, I started selling furniture. And one of my dreams was always to make awesome pieces that were actually affordable. Well, long story short, I pretty quickly realized that I couldn't do it. And after a few years, I just kind of got bored with making and selling furniture and started making YouTube videos instead. Dream dead, right? Wrong. In a turn of events, through making these videos and increased exposure, I had a few companies approach me about manufacturing some of my original designs. Well, eventually I took a meeting with one we hit it off and we're gonna give it a go. So I'm gonna put some links below so that you can check out my website and read more about it. But in short, they're a family owned company called Woodcastle Furniture. They've been manufacturing furniture for over 39 years in Albany, Oregon. All of their stuff uses solid hardwood construction and I could go on and on, but let's just say that it's quality stuff, better quality than the stuff I was producing on my own for sure. So we're gonna kick off the venture by offering three pieces that you've seen me build on this channel in the past the bench slash coffee table from my first video, the trapezoidal console I built about a year ago, and as I already kind of mentioned at the top of the video, this bookshelf piece that I'm building right now. As an added bonus, from now until February 28th, 2018, we're offering an introductory special of 15% off plus free shipping in the contiguous United States. I'm honestly super excited about this, so please check it out. Tell your friends about it, your family, your neighbors, your enemies. Just let it be known, and know that I appreciate it. My hope is that we can grow this thing and start making even more pieces down the road, so I'm gonna just keep busting my butt and crossing my fingers, and I guess we'll just see how it all shakes out. All right, let's get back to the build. Once the leg pieces were cut to their final shape, I started making the shorter connector pieces that'll tie the front and the back legs together. These needed to be a bit thinner since they sit shy of the legs when viewed from the outside. 
So after I milled them down to about 3 eighths of an inch thick, I moved over to the table saw and ripped them to their final width of about 3 quarters of an inch. In the end, each of these will be a different length, but for now it's easiest to just leave them long and then flush things up after I've glued them up. Next, I grabbed our old friends the leg pieces and cut in a series of dados that will eventually receive the stretcher pieces we just made. This might be the trickiest part of the whole build because the dados in the back legs, which are vertical at 90 degrees, need to be cut in different spots than those in the front legs, which are angled. Basically, you just want to make a detailed drawing or model, and then I just put my faith in the fact that I figured out everything ahead of time, and just kind of follow the math. Thankfully, it all worked out, so next I glued everything together. And then the last thing that I did before calling it a night was to trim off the extra length and bring everything to flush. The next morning, I set the leg assemblies aside so that I could get to work on the case. After I'd cut out the pieces I'd need to mill, I ran them through the planer to get them down to 3 quarters of an inch thick. When I used to sell this piece, I made the case out of plywood with a hardwood face frame. The version we're going to be selling online though is 100% solid wood. But anyway, in the prototype that I'm working on here, I left the pieces at 3 quarters of an inch thick, though technically they should have been 3 eighths. That's just because I wanted the front edge to mimic the aesthetic of having an inch and a half wide face frame and also because I'm actually going to be using this thing as a piece of kids' furniture, and I just thought it might be better to leave it thicker. Once everything was to the proper thickness, I got each of the four pieces cut to the perfect size by cross-cutting each one twice, once on each end, and then by ripping each piece twice, also once on each end. That way, every edge had a clean cut, and the pieces were exactly the right size to start cutting joinery. Next, I started marking out all the layout lines for my joinery. For the case, I'm going to use a simple half-lap rabbit. I think that's what it's called. So after everything was set up, I set my blade to the right height, and then made the four cuts that I needed to make on each end of the top and bottom pieces. Next, I got out my jig for running the pieces vertically across the blade and made the second of the cuts that would clear out the rest of the material. It's a pretty simple joint to make, but it's still plenty strong. Alright everybody, today, here is Chris. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't put my voice in there, because my voice is really high. After I'd finished gluing all the case pieces together and they were all clamped up, I started working on the shelves. Here I'm breaking them down and leaving them quite a bit longer than they're going to need to be at the end. I always like to hold off cutting them to length until the last possible moment. You'll see why later. So here I'm just milling them down to 3 eighths of an inch thick. Half of the normal 3 quarters of an inch. It was starting to get pretty late and I didn't want to make any more noise and bug the neighbors. So the last thing that I did for the evening was mark out all the cut lines for the dados that will hold the shelves. In the past, I've tried to do this step before I glued up the leg assemblies, but it's actually a lot easier to do it after they're glued up. That's because the back of the leg is at a 90 degree angle, so I just use a square to mark a line that'll be parallel to the ground, and then cut the dado in the front and the back leg at the same time in one pass. But since it's late, we'll do that tomorrow. The next morning, while it was still too early to fire up any serious power tools, I decided to temporarily attach the cabinet to the leg assemblies. These are going to be glued on later, but here I'm just kind of figuring out where all my screws will need to go and getting them drilled in. Then that way when it comes time to glue up, I can just move a little bit faster. Once the hour was a little bit more reasonable, I took it all apart and headed over to the table saw to cut the shelf datas into the leg assemblies. These are technically pretty simple to cut, 
The miter gauge is set at zero degrees, so really the only tricky part is that you have two leg assemblies that are mirrors of one another. So you just want to make sure that the dados are cut in the respective right spots. Once all six dados were cut, I dry fit the assembly to the case again, and then use the measurements of the space between each of the dados to finalize the shelf lengths. A tip here is that it's important not to cut each of the shelves to the exact same length right in the beginning. In a perfect world, that's how it should work, but this isn't a perfect world. So if you cut the first or bottom shelf slightly longer than it should have been, and you've cut them all the same, what's gonna happen is that the leg assemblies are gonna spread further and further as you move up. So even if you're only talking about a quarter of an inch over those 20 whatever inches from the bottom shelf to the top shelf, you're gonna end up with a noticeable gap in the top shelf. Long story short, make lots of little cuts and work away at things until you get all three shelves to fit in nicely. Once that was done, I cut each of the three shelves to a different width. That's so that they get narrower as they move up and match the angle of the front leg. And with all the pieces ready to go, I moved on to the glue. I started by gluing and screwing the leg assemblies to the cabinet. To make sure it was tight across the whole length of the cabinet, I used a few spring clamps while things dried. And then my son came out and decided to ham it up, so I told him to host the show for a minute. A what? <laughs> After both sides had been attached, I started gluing in the shelves. Sorry this next shot is a little out of focus, but anyway. I didn't want to glue both sides in at the same time because I didn't want to get a bunch of glue all over the pieces. So instead I kind of bent the wood away from the shelves to make some little gaps and glued everything in on one side and clamped it all together. And then the next morning, after I unclamped everything, I applied some glue to the opposite side and then reclamped. It takes twice as long, but it's just a lot cleaner. All right, we're on the home stretch here, I promise. So later that morning, I started working on the doors. I started by milling the pieces to their proper thickness once again. And I'm sure you're getting sick of seeing me use the planer, so I tried to get this fancy schmancy slow motion Vimeo style wood chip shower shot, but it kind of backfired when the dust part clogged and it sent all these wood chips flying backwards into the garage. So a little sweep up later, I took all the pieces over to the table saw and made a few passes, slowly nibbling away the material until the piece was just the right width to fit into the cabinet. And then once that was dialed in, I cross-cut both the doors to length so that all the gaps would be just right. Next I marked out some center marks for where I could use a Forstner bit to mortise out the hinge hardware. As you can see in this shot from all the burning, my Forstner bit was super dull. But by this point it was about 4.30 on Christmas Eve, a few parties I had to go to were rapidly approaching, and well, I guess sometimes you just gotta dance with the one who brung ya. So with that out of the way, I mounted all the hardware and made sure everything fit together just right. And then I cut a pair of negative spots to act as door pulls. If you've made it this far into the video, I'm guessing that you're enjoying it. So if you'd be so kind, do me a favor and hit those like and subscribe buttons. I'm sure you're tired of hearing YouTubers ask for that, but it really does help. And I put a ton of time into these videos, so be a sport. Thanks. Oh, also, if you're already subscribed, go ahead and click that notification bell. Normally over the end of the videos, I like to try to say something funny or hopefully insightful, but I'm actually gonna skip that for today. And instead just mention the furniture partnership with Woodcastle one more time. It really means a lot to me and to a lot of the people at Woodcastle Furniture. So I think it's worth it. Just check it out and let me know what you think. 
Good or bad, I'm genuinely interested. Special thanks to Liam Hines, Brian McKnight, Gabe J, Jason Willoughby, James Bibb, and the rest of my Patreon members for making these videos possible. Let's be honest, this whole furniture endeavor is a swing for the fences. It could turn into something really huge, or I could strike out. But you guys, you are my singles and occasional stand-up doubles. You keep me on the team and playing ball. Okay, I don't know why I went for that baseball analogy there, but seriously, thank you. And if you want to find out more about how you can support the show too, check out the Patreon link in the description. And as always, no pressure. See you next time.